Uh, let the church say amen this morning. Uh, it's so good to see all of those who are out and present on this very cold, uh, this very snowy, slippery, wet day. Uh, but it's a good day again. I said that last Sunday. It was a good day last Sunday when it was snowy, it was slippery, and it was wet and cold. Uh, but God has blessed us all with another day to be able to come out and rejoice and uplift his holy name. Has he been good to you? Amen. He's been good to me. I, I, yeah, if he's been good to me. I know he's been good to you all because I'm looking at, out at you and y'all looking fairly well this morning. Uh, I, I know there may be some aches and there's some pains and things are not quite working right with this body. And uh, who is it? It, it, it? Who is it? I, I mean, if you've lived any number of years, you uh, have some physical things that tend to, that tend to bother you uh, throughout uh, your days, and throughout your weeks and months, and throughout uh, the upcoming years. But God has blessed us, and I'm so glad that he's blessed us all with the ability to be able to come out and worship him. Uh, remember to keep those uh, who are traveling in our prayers. Uh, brother and sister Haggard are on the road. Uh, they are coming from Denver, Colorado. Uh, I know that the Crutchfields are on the road right now. They are leaving uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. They're headed back to this Kansas City area, so please do uh, pray for them. We know that Brother Proctor is out sick as well as Sister Proctor is uh, out sick, so please uh, uh, pray uh, for her. I know that Brother David Rolfe is out sick as well. Uh, please continue to pray for my wife. Uh, last Tuesday she had what was called a manipulation to her left uh, knee and they did uh, some small arthroscopic opos surgery uh, uh, to that left knee as well to uh, help break up some of the scar tissue that is uh, in that left knee and that was a success. So uh, please continue to pray for uh, her uh, recovery. Uh, pray again. Uh, I'll be very specific that you pray for her emotional, mental, uh, as well as you're praying for her physical, definitely praying for her spiritual uh, well-being. So please continue uh, to do that as she uh, uh, recovers. Uh, please continue to do that. Pray for our family as a whole. Um, there was someone else I wanted to mention that was not present with us this morning. Sister Banks, yes, continue to pray for Sister Banks. She is still in the hospital and research uh, hospital, so please continue uh, to pray uh, for her as well. Uh, listen, I have stepped away from our series out of the book of Nehemiah for just a short period in time. My heart, uh, in some cases, have been uh, heavy, and uh, as you read and begin to study the Word of God, there are things that are, uh, uh, that are open to you, uh, and it's funny when uh, things that you read that are really not relatable and then, uh, Brother Smock, you read them again, and there's something going in and on in your life, and that scripture seems to uh, speak volume. Uh, it, it seems to be a, a scripture now that is on the billboard, that is always seen as you travel through uh, this life, a billboard that comes up and says that God is uh, the God of all. He is uh, the creator and we are the creature and everything seems to be a little bit more exemplified in our lives. Our behavior begins to change because of the word of God. And, uh, and that's where I'm at. So uh, if you notice, I've been, uh, I love the Old Testament. One of, the, uh, one of my favorite books is uh, the book of Psalm and I enjoy reading it. I enjoy studying it. And uh, you should too. You should invest some time into uh, really getting into the book of Psalms and also the book of Proverbs. Two very, very good books uh, that will help you immensely uh, on this journey from earth to heaven. Uh, if you will, turn your Bibles to the Old Testament, Psalm the 27th chapter. Uh, I want to thank uh, Brother Long for uh, reading uh, the scripture in our hearing this morning as well as the prayer. And thank you, thank you, Xavier Wallace, for uh, leading us in the songs of praise this morning uh, to the Almighty God. Isn't that one we can uplift our voice and sing to God? Amen. That is the way we show forth our praise to Him uh, by the fruit of our lips. Isn't that wonderful that we can sing and it shows how much we uh, love Him and how much uh, we are thankful uh, for the things that He has done for us over the past week. We've entered into uh, another week, which is a good week, and uh, we want to start that week off right in the Old Testament in Psalm the 27th chapter, uh, verse number one through 14. For time's sake, I will only read uh, verse number one and we'll uh, peruse through the rest of the verses that you see in uh, this chapter. 
uh, verse number one, Psalm the 27th chapter said, the Lord is my light, my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Of whom shall I be afraid? Their names are Riffraff, Simon Barr, Sinister. His name is Underdog. Uh, you remember her name. It was Sweet Polly Purebred. And if you remember, uh, Underdog was the hero. Underdog was uh, the hero that feared no one or feared uh, nothing. Uh, you remember her name was Sweet Polly Purebred. And when uh, she was in trouble, uh, Underdog would say, uh, when Sweet Polly Purebred is in trouble, I am not slow. It's hip, 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 and away I go. Uh, he said, underdog, it, he said, never fear because underdog is here. Uh, you remember, he was the lovable shoeshine boy in disguise. But when, when there was trouble and when it happened with his love interest, sweet Polly Purebred, underdog, would change into this magnificent strong dog of strength that feared and was afraid of no one. And you remember the cartoon. Some of our younger folks are going, what is he talking about? Uh, we're, we're used to looking at cat dog and, and, and what's some of the dumb cartoons they're watching? I don't know. But I remember, here's the reason why I remember uh, Underdog so much. It was my favorite cartoon. Underdog was my favorite cartoon, Brother Boone. I would get off the bus at 2.45 and I would run all the way home because underdog came on at 3 o'clock I had to get my homework done I had to get my bowl of cereal get it ready in 15 minutes to get in front of the TV because see mama said you can't watch no TV until homework was done well underdog was a cartoon of my, my favorite cartoon and I made sure I would be sitting there watching underdog with my bowl of Cheerios with a banana cut up in it yeah so listen, uh, let's look at what David wrote in Psalms, the 27th chapter, as uh, we look at the tag for this morning's lesson, uh, which is uh, uh, underdog said it when he says, uh, I, I, never fear, for I am here. There's no reason for us to fear. Never fear. There is no reason for us to fear. Uh, verse Mox, I want you to look at verse number one of our uh, text and read that back to me. Read that into the hearing of uh, everyone that's hearing uh, Psalm, the 27th chapter, verse uh, number one. And I want you to pay attention to what uh, David is saying. Uh, read, if you will. The Lord is my light. He said, the Lord is my light and, and my, salvation. my salvation. Keep reading. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Keep reading. The Lord is my strength. He is the strength of, of my life. life. Of whom shall I of be afraid? Of whom shall I be afraid? Uh, listen, folks, I want you to know uh, that uh, the Lord in the Hebrew is Yahweh. Uh, he is the existing one. He is self-existing. Uh, that means there is no one greater than him. Uh, men tend to think that they are more magnificent and more better than God. Men seem to think sometimes that they are greater than the creator when they are the creature. Men seem to think that they are self-sufficient. They are self-existent. They are self-reliant on themselves. But that's an impossibility because God said he is the existing one. He is the only one that created this world that you and I uh, live in. The Bible says, David said, that not only that he is the existing one, but he is the light. Yeah. Oh my goodness. He is the light. Y'all, hey, did you hear that? That's an amen in itself. He is the light. And here's the reason why I said, you ever been in darkness? 
You ever been in a place where you could not see where you were going? You were trying to navigate through darkness. Your hands were feeling around. You were moving around and your steps were very precise and slow and very short because you knew that if you kept moving, there's danger. There is danger ahead of you. You will fall into something. You will trip into something. So as you're walking in the darkness, you're feeling around. But I want you to know that there is a light, Brother Smocks. I don't want you to know that there is a light. It's called artificial light. Uh, see, see, we got them on now. Uh, it's called artificial light. Uh, when you are in darkness, all you have to do is hit that switch. And light comes on. It does not matter whether it's fluorescent light. It does not matter whether it's, it, 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 it's, it's calm light. It's smooth light. It's calming light. It does not matter if it's daylight like the uh, lights that we have now. It does not matter if it's LED light. All you know is now there is some light that brought you out of darkness to be able to uh, allow and assist you to move about. That's artificial light. It's powered by electricity. Artificial light is powered by battery. Artificial light is powered by oil. Artificial light is the light where we can turn on and turn off at any given moment. But now, we're not talking about artificial life, light. I'm talking about another light. But then there is another light. It's called natural light. Everybody know what natural light is? Come on now, you walk outside on your deck at night, you look up in the sky and there's a full moon out. There's stars that are all over and that stars in the moon are bringing light to where darkness is. There are no street lights. You ever been in a situation where you're walking down a very dark road that there are trees on both sides but the road is being illuminated by the moon and star lights? Above? Have you ever seen it? I enjoy and love the full moon. I love watching and just staring at a full moon because I know it's a light. I know it's a natural light. And I know that light was created by God. I know that there's another light. It's called, it's called sunlight. Yeah, heavenly sunlight. Heavenly sunlight. You see, you know the light that I'm talking about, but it's a light that was created by the light. Did you hear me? It was a light that was created by by out of the light. Uh, you remember, get them in Genesis, the first chapter, uh, verse number th uh, 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 one. Genesis, the first, no th th the first chapter, verse number three. Genesis, the first chapter, verse number three. Read that for me, uh, Brother Smarts. I want you to see something this morning. Read. Then God said, And God said, Let there be light. Let there be light. Light came from who? God. So God is the light. I want you to know that when God said, let there be light, watch this, that was on day one. On day number four, God created the light, the natural light that you and I see today. So what am I saying? The preacher is suggesting to you this morning that that light is just God himself. Yeah. When he said, ah, I created the light. God is light in himself. God is light. Turn to 1 John, the first chapter, verse number 5. 1 John, the first chapter, verse number 5. I want you to know the type of light that David was talking about. I want you to see the type of light that David was referring to. The one light that he counted on. He didn't count on artificial light. He didn't count on natural light. He counted on the light that shines in itself. The self-existing light. It was the light of God. Read. First John, the first chapter, verse number five. This is the message which we have heard. Yes, keep reading. From him and declare to you. Uh-huh, he declared. That God is light. That God is what? Is light. God is light. We know that there is no what? And in him there is no it, darkness No at all. darkness in him. Did you hear that? That's the light that David is talking about. I'm not talking about an artificial light. David was not talking about an artificial light. I'm not talking about a natural light. David was not talking about a natural light. I'm talking about the light of the self-existing God that created everything in his light in himself. That's the light that David was talking about. Now let me tell you what light does. Light dispels darkness. That's right. Light dispels uh, darkness. Uh, just try it. Get in a dark place and turn a light on. And you will see that darkness goes away. 
and, and let me say, let me tell you something. So when the Bible begins to talk about darkness, the Bible is referring uh, in a symbolic sense uh, that darkness is trouble. Darkness is tragedy. Darkness is trials. Darkness is temptations. Darkness is tribulations. So, 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 so light dispels all of that. It dispels the trials and the tribulation, the tragedy. It dispels sorrow. I I'm talking about the light, the same light that David is talking about. And it's not an artificial light. It's not a natural light. It is the light of the almighty God. That's the kind of light I'm talking about. And that light dispels darkness and that darkness consists of all types of distress in our life all types of trouble that come in our life i, I want you to know in this life uh, there will be a trouble we know that in this life there will be trouble uh, verse number one says in uh, psalms the 27th chapter god said uh, david said that he is the light and he says and my salvation there have been some times when i needed him and, and everybody in here i'll say amen because there have been some times in life when you needed him uh, let me tell you what he, david was talking about uh, when he said salvation do you know david had had his own son that was out to kill him absalom was after him after him to kill him god kept it in such a place where absalom was never able to do that god was his salvation in times of trouble see there are times when me and you just can't do it we just can't seem to muster up enough to be able to get out of situation to be able to talk our way out of situation to be able to move our way out of the situation we don't have enough income we don't have enough smarts we don't have enough education but god is a god of salvation regardless of your education level regardless of your status in this world when it pertains to your education regardless of how much money you have you may have 66 million dollars in the bank or you may have 66 cent in the bank it does not matter God is our salvation and he's able to get us out of all situation he's able to get us out of a struggling situation he is the one he is the God that I look up for and I look up to now watch this he said he is the strength of my life oh my God there have been some times when I shake so hard that I couldn't hardly put one foot in front of the other. Fear was there. I don't know what phobia you have, but I had some phobias and I still have some phobias that I have to work through. There are some things that I'm afraid of. There's some things that are fearful in my life. And in each and one of us, if judgment ain't be honest, all of us in here would say, Amen. 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 David said, he's the strength of my life. So what he's saying, Brother Holt, he's saying when I'm weak, when I am feeble, when I am insecure, when I am short-minded, when my mobility is shallow, uh, when I am not up where I need to be, when I am down in the valley, I'm not standing on top of the rock, I'm not standing on top of the mountain, but I'm deep in the valley. He is my strength when I am my weakest. He is my strength when I am my weakest. Did you hear that same man when you came? That's the type of, that's the type of, uh, 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 that's what David was saying in Psalm the 27th chapter. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. I whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid of? Did you hear that? That's what David is saying. There's no reason for us to fear. Never fear because God 
is here. Yeah. Yeah, he got a little something on underdog. Right. Underdog may have had some strength. Underdog may have been able to pick up a building. Underdog may have been able to pick up a mountain. But at some point in time, Underdog lost his strength. And he had to take his super, super energy pill. Well, I'm here to tell you that God does not have to take a super energy pill. If he wants to move a mountain from one location to the other, he can do it because he's strong enough to do it. Why? Because he's self-existent. He is the light. He light in himself. So when there is no light, when there is darkness, God dispels all of that. Who yeah, yeah. needs that? Raise your hand. I need it. We all need it. He did that. Listen, listen. Listen. Verse number 27. Uh, 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 Psalm 27 chapter. Look at verse number 2. Uh, and again, hold on. Just get ready for verse number 2. I want you to look at the thesis statement that David made in verse number 1. And then he goes on to verse number 2 to 14. And that thesis statement, verse number 1, that he is the light, my salvation, and my strength. It holds up everything else that he says throughout verses number 2 up to 14. What he's doing is laying the foundation and he's building up on it. He's supporting the thesis statement by verses 2 through 14. That's what he's doing. Look at verse number 2. Read that for me, uh, if you will, Brother Smarts. When the wicked came against me. He said, when the wicked... Came against me. Came against me. To eat up my flesh. To eat up my flesh. Read that again. He said, when the wicked came against and, me. Uh, 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 verse number two, read it again. When the wicked, when came, the wicked came against me. When you have, you're in the King James Version. It says, I'm in King James. It's one, usually I'm normally in the uh, 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 American Standard Version this morning. I should have, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't clarify that. I'm in the King James Version right. this morning. It says, verse number two says, when and then of the wicked and even my enemies and foes. Read on. Came upon me. Came upon me to eat my flesh. They, they stumbled went. and fell. They did what? They stumbled they and fell. They stumbled yeah. and fell. Did you hear that? Brother Smith said, when they come after me, you, you, you listening to me? When they come after me, I, I, look, I already know the light. I already know where my salvation is. I already know where my strength is, where my stronghold is, where my fortification is. I know where the rock is. I know where I'm going to get it from. So when my enemies come up behind me, when my foes, when my fake false and phony friends, uh, yeah, you got them too. If I got them, you got them. The Amen. fake false and phony friends, and let me tell you, David had some fake friends uh, during this time, but he also had some real enemies. Yeah, he had some people that was trying to get him. Uh, do you hear me this morning? I'm trying to help somebody to see that never fear. God is here. We don't need anything else. So, so uh, let me get back to where I was. Uh, verse number two. Uh, read that again so I can catch back up with myself. Read it again. Read it. When the wicked. When the wicked. Even my enemies. Even my enemies. And my foes. And my foes. Came upon me, me, me to eat me up. Flesh, they stumbled and, and fell. fell. Now watch that. You know what that is? Sometimes we don't know it. Do you know this triumph in every day that you and I live? There's triumph, there's victory in every day that you and I live. What the preacher is saying, every day is not a bad day. You ever seen somebody that come and they, oh, oh, woe was me. This and that. No, I can't do this. Oh, if I only had this. Oh, if I needed it. I need this. Oh, I need you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, uh, there, there, there is no triumph. There's always tragedy. They seem to go through all these trials. They seem to always be in trouble. But this preacher stand before you today that lets you know that there is triumph in our day because every day is not a bad day. Did you hear me? Every day is not a bad day. So if you, if you were to go home and you were to take out a tablet and get yourself a pen and begin to write down all of the good things God has done for you, all of the victories in your life, all of the triumphs in your life, you're going to run out of paper and your, ink, your pen is going to run out of ink. You won't have enough time in to pay to write down all of the things that God has blessed you with. All of the things in how you have become victorious and triumph over evil. So what he's saying is, a bus mocks, when your enemies come towards you, when your foes are coming, 
You know, when the evil people, those wicked people, you know, we got them in the church. You, you know, with a hope, uh, we say we got, we got a, a strong, weak, and the wicked. You, you, you work with the strong. You, 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 you pray. Uh, you, you work with the, I'm getting it together. It's running through my mind. It's coming. Uh, see, with the strong, you work with the strong. And the strong of the do what? And bear uh, the infirmities of the weak, according to Romans, the 15th chapter, verse number 1. So strong, keep on bearing the infirmities of the weak. And then those folks that are wicked, you just keep praying for them. That's what you do. You keep, keep praying for them. You keep on praying for them. Because some wicked folks just aren't where you are. Because come on now, say amen. amen. Somebody better say amen. Because it was some point in time that you and I were just as wicked as we could be. And we came up here and we sat up in here and we sang, Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. And, and don't even love the person that's sitting across from the building. But yet we say how much we love God, but yet we don't love the person that we see. Isn't that something? So, so, so we got to pray for them folks. So David was saying, they're coming. The wicked is coming. The wicked is coming, but God's got a plan for the wicked. See, he said, uh, no matter what they try to do, they going to stumble and fail. You know the people that are, are working uh, under the undercurrent? See, everybody's in the boat, and we're going this way, and we struggling together. We're in sync. We're in harmony. We're rowing together. We got our eyes on the prize. We're looking for the goal that's in front of us. So we're rowing. But yet, uh, we got our eyes forward, but there's somebody behind us. And they're rowing in the opposite way. They're the undercurrent. They're trying to keep us from progressing. They're trying to keep us from being the people that we ought to be. That's what's happening. Those are the wicked. But God knows it, and God takes care of them. No matter how much effort they put in, they stumble and fall. The Bible says in Romans uh, the 8th chapter, verse number 31, if God be for you, who can be against you? Are you with me this morning? Who can get, be against you? So the, the wicked, the wicked, the wicked, when the wicked come, no, he said, when the wicked come, not if, they coming in our direction. So whenever there's good going on, you better believe that the hope there's evil right there. And some of your enemies, your fake, false, and phony friends will be sitting right next to you. And you better recognize it. And you're going to have some folks that straight out don't care about you. Your real enemies. They don't like the way you look. They don't like the way you talk. They don't like because God blesses you. They don't like the favor that God blesses you with. Right. All I tell them is just ask me what I did, and then you can have the same blessing and same favor. All you got to do is add, because I'm going to tell you exactly what to do. The first thing you got to do is know who to fear and how to fear. Because uh, David said, the Lord is my what? Light. He is my salvation, yeah. and he is my strength. That's where I get it from. Verse number three of our text. We we'll move fastly. Got to move quickly. What does it say? Though a host should encamp he against said, me. Though a host should encamp against me. My heart shall not fear. My heart shall not fear. We don't. The war shall rise against me. The war shall rise up against me. Watch this. In this will I be confident. Did, did you hear that? In this. In this. I will be confident in the war. I'm going to be confident. What's David saying? Never fear because God is here. I don't have no reason to fear. I don't have no reason to be afraid. I don't care that the war at work is a bad one. My boss said it looks as though we're going to have to let you go. That's a battle I'm going to keep on fighting. And then I'm going to turn the battle over to God because I'm going to have confidence in what he is going to do in that war. You talking? You see what I'm talking about? She ain't acting right. I know she ain't acting right. My wife ain't doing what she's supposed to do. He ain't doing what he's supposed to be doing in that war. You better have some confidence 
in what God can do. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Wars are coming. Trouble is coming. You must have confidence in God. There's something called faith. You got to have trust in God. You have to have confidence in God. And Brother Smarts, all of us have to have faith in God. Those words are synonymous with each other, right. meaning that I'm going to put everything that I have in God and I will not fear. I will not be afraid. Amen. Amen. There's something called faith, deductive faith, and inductive faith. Deductive faith is meaning you went from the top and worked your way down to the bottom. You saw everything that made it sensible to you. Everything lined up. There was nothing really to figure out. So deductive faith would be God has blessed me immensely. I saw his work. He done some stuff in my past. He brought me through trouble. He brought me through trials. There's been strife in my life that God has helped me to do. He's been my protection. He's been the one who nurtured me and nourished me. He is my life. He is my salvation. He is my strength. I see what he has done. That's called deductive faith. But can we have inductive faith? Let me tell you what inductive faith is. The future. Now it's going from the bottom. Up. But the problem with most of us is we don't have the faith to go to the end. We don't have the faith to go to the end and see what God has blessed us with. So we get nervous. Uh, we say we have faith and then something happened. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Uh, now something happened. Now your faith has to be proven. See, everybody and say they have faith as long as everything is going well I got money in the bank I got uh, new cars and I got a new house and uh, the kids are okay and the relationship with wife is great she loves me and I love her and everything's going well we on vacation uh, two times a year and uh, the preacher's preaching the sermons that we like to hear. He's not rebuking us. He's not reproving us. He's not making us feel uncomfortable and, and guilty about our lifestyle. He's he not saying those things that make us nervous when we sitting in the pews. He's not saying those things that make us uh, get quiet. You, you know, see, when you get when they get quiet, brother, boom, uh, that means they uh, it's going in and they're thinking. See, they, they, you're not like that. Everything is is good. Uh, the car is running. It starts up every time you get in it. It starts up every time. See, see, that's called, uh, that's called deductive faith. You see what I'm saying? Inductive faith is sometimes you get in the car and, 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 but the whole thing goes, and you start praying, oh Lord, please, Betsy. Please let Betsy start up. I need Betsy to start up. God, I need for you to start up and Betsy don't start up. You see what I'm saying? But you still better have some faith. You got to have some faith and see faith without works is what? Dead. So you get on the phone and you call up, you call up a buddy of yours. You said, man, I need a ride to work. I need to get there quickly. He says, I got you, my brother. He zooms over, pick you up. That's inductive faith. Can we believe that that can happen? That's the kind of faith that David had. He knew deductive faith, but he also knew inductive faith. Look at verse number four. Watch that. Now watch this, remember what I said. Uh, his thesis statement to verse number one is, is what lays uh, the support, uh, the undergirt, the foundation of verses two through 14. Read, uh, verse number four. One thing I desired of the Lord. He said, one thing I desired of the Lord. Listen, listen. That I will seek after. He, he said, he would what? Seek after. Keep reading. He will seek after. That I may dwell in the house that of the Lord. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Keep on reading. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. Read. To behold the beauty of the Lord. To hold, behold the beauty of the Lord. Read. And to inquire in his temple. And, and to inquire. Mm -hmm. Did you, to, to inquire. Listen church. This word seek is a Hebrew word. And it's bakash. B A W K A S H, Bakash. And it literally means 
to search out in any way possible. It's almost by all means necessary. But let me, let me take it a little further. It's talking about in worship, oh my goodness, and prayer. Did you hear that? In worship and in prayer. You searching out God. You seeking out God. But David said, in the house of the Lord. You mean you wouldn't go to hell? I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Some folks got to learn how to seek him. He ain't in the clubs. If you're seeking him in the clubs, he ain't there. I, I, I just want to tell you that. Uh, see, see at, at, at the juice joint, he ain't there. Uh, see, at the parties, you know, deep down, the, the white parties, you know where everybody dresses up in white, and there'll always be somebody that comes to the white par party in cream, and, and you look and say, look at that guy, he got cream on, this is a white party. You know, you, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, Brother Smith? Brother, brother, You've been there? Come on, now, somebody better say amen. I'm not the only one. Come on, now. Somebody better say amen. I'm not the only one making me feel bad. I'm trying to be transparent. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to show the greatest amount of humility as possible. Come on now, you've been to them pajama parties. Yeah, come on, good man. Come on now, you've been to them pajama parties. You've been to them uh, places, you know, uh, them clubs where, uh, the, you know, everybody named candy and, and sugar. And yeah, yeah, come on now, say amen. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> There you go. I wanted to make sure I'm in the other room. <laughs> there you go. But, but, but look how God brought us. Look at his grace. Look at his mercy. Look where he brought us to. Look where he brought us from too. You see what I'm saying? Amen. Now can you say amen to that? Amen. Amen. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans the third chapter, verse number 23. No, not one is righteous. Romans the third chapter, verse number 10. Come on now. Say amen when you can. But, 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 but he says to seek after. And he also says to inquire. Uh, it could be any version, uh, 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 New American Standard Version, spell it I-N-Q-I-R-E. Uh, but the, the um, King James Version is spelled it E-N-Q-I-R-E, inquire. And let me tell you what that word, the Hebrew word, uh, same origin of, uh, as the word uh, bakash. It's called bakar. Uh, the phonetic spelling is B-A-W-K-A-R. It too means to seek out. It too means to inquire. It too means to search out. It too means that there is some action involved. And it's talking about our worship and in prayer. <sighs> Can I bring that to the 21st century? Can I bring something over 2,500 years old to the 21st century? And, and, and let's try to make that because you know you, you, you know Paul said in Romans the 15th chapter verse number 4 whatsoever things were written four times were written for our learning that we through uh, patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope so let me bring that on up into the 21st century somebody ought to want to come and worship amen. say amen. amen somebody ought to want to be here at worship right. every Sunday every time the doors are open every time that the worship doors are open. Somebody, I don't want to be here to seek out, to inquire him. All right. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Isn't that all right? And, and see, David talks about prayer too. You, if you look at verses number uh, 7 to 12, uh, read verse number 7, you will see uh, 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 he begins a prayer with, uh, O oh Lord, I cry out to you. Read verse number uh, 7. Hear, O Lord. He said, Hear, O Lord, my cry. When I cry my voice. When I cry my voice. So now David is saying a prayer to the Lord. We got to understand that some of the, one of the most important things that we can do is worship and pray to the Almighty God. Yeah. Prayer does change things. Yeah. Yeah. It does. And I always say it. When your life is raggedy, all you got to do is check your prayer life. If your prayer life is raggedy, your life is raggedy. If your life is raggedy, your prayer life is raggedy. That's all you got to do is check it. You, you check it and you see. Drop down on your knees and pray to the Almighty God. Seek Him out. Inquire of Him in His house. David said that I will dwell in the house of the Lord for how long? Forever. 
Forever. That's what he said. Yeah. Forever. That's what he said. I'm trying to help us to understand there's no reason to fear. Never fear. Because God is here. Yeah. He is my light. Yeah. That means he guides me along the way when darkness comes. Right. He's a light that never can be extinguished. Darkness is the emblem of distress and pain and suffering and trials and tribulation. God is the opposite of. I'm trying to help us. I'm trying to help us to see how important it is to make sure that we have a good relationship with the Almighty God. Go to verse number 5 of our text. I want you to see something. Look at verse number 5 of Psalm, the 22nd chapter. Read, Brother Smocks. For in the time of trouble. So in the time of trouble. He shall hide me in his pavilion. Watch this. He shall hide me in his pavilion. Read on. In the secret of his tabernacle. In the secret of his tabernacle. Shall he hide with me. Shall he hide. Well, read shall me. he hide me. Shall he hide me. Read on. He shall set me upon a rock. Watch this. Listen. He shall set me upon a rock. Now watch, watch this. Listen. 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 See when the enemies come. Here's what God does. Brother Hoover, here's what God does. They're coming to do you harm. They intense. They're coming to hurt you, Brother Holt. They're coming, and what God does, he distracts them and detours them. And you walk that path. They thought you were this way, but they went that way. Uh, let me take, give you an illustration. When I was employed at UPS, I was an operations supervisor. And we carried these Motorola, Motorola walkie-talkies. So high, large frequencies, high. Uh, we could talk to other people across in other buildings, on, in other uh, plants. We didn't realize that. But they were very good radios, and we could talk. So we use them in the building to be able to communicate because we're in this massive building. There's equipment uh, that's running. There's electrical uh, equipment, operational equipment running. And it, it, sometimes it's a, a little loud. So I, I remember um, my boss called me over the radio and he asked me something. And I gave him the response. No, nope, I said the response, meaning it was the right response. But for some reason, he didn't like the response. So he made a comment over the radio that didn't sit for, that didn't sit well with Anson Wallace. This is where God works, I'm telling you. So I was hot mad. I always say hot mad. That means I was on fire mad. But hope I start calling him on the radio, he wouldn't answer. Other people heard what he said. Some people made comments about it. So now I am very upset. So I said, let me go seek him out. So as I was going this way, I, I think in my mind about this now, God had him moving in the opposite direction. For 35 minutes, I walked that entire facility. It's large, it's huge. I'm walking and I'm walking and I'm constantly calling his name. He won't answer. And I kept walking and walking. I would backtrack and go around. And when he was going that way, God had him going this way. When I was coming this way, God had him going that way. We never had a chance to meet until after the operation was over. And by that time, all my anger was gone. I was still mad, but not the way I was. See, something bad would happen. See, that's what I'm saying. That God will hide you from your enemies. Did you hear that? He'll hide you from your enemies. And sometimes God will hide you from yourself. <laughs> he, he, he showed up, hit me from myself that day. God hides you from my, now, now, now read the last part of verse number five again. He set him, hid him. Now watch this, how God hides you. There's nobody else can do this. Let's read it. He shall set me upon a rock. He shall set me upon a rock. Now this is God hiding. This is God hiding David. How do you hide somebody and set them up on a rock to be seen? Well, what he's saying is, Brother Boone, God can put us in positions and he can hide us in plain sight. And, and what it is, we're high. And our enemies cannot get to us. But, but what kind of perspective is that, bro? 
but, uh, but, but smart, that's the greatest perspective you could ever have. That's why in your prayer life, that's why when you come here and you should come here and you ought to worship him, God puts you at a different perspective. He hides you from your enemies. He hides you from the wicked. He hides you from your foes and he sets you up on high yeah. where your perspective is a lot different now. Right. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Right. Yeah, see, see, when, see, when your perspective it, 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 it's different. He sets you up on a rock. He sets you up high. But now you're able to look down. You can see your enemies coming. Yeah. You see them coming. You know what they up to. God is the only one that can hide us in plain sight. And we get a different perspective. See, you know what I'm saying? Listen here, brother. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, brother, 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 brother Long, here's what I'm saying. See, we had a tough day. It's been a tough week. I, I gotta get up in here. It, it's been so tough. I need. I need to get some because y'all don't know what I was getting ready to do to that woman. You know, she let, she's in the cubicle uh, right next to me, and, and she said some stuff. Y'all don't know uh, how, how quickly things could have went bad. You see what I'm saying? Y'all don't know how the boss treated me. Right. Uh, y'all don't know what was getting ready to happen. You I, you don't know how the kids had me going all week long. I was going crazy. I'm up to the school for this. I'm uh, up to the school for that. Um, uh, the kids are doing this. My neighbors are coming over saying the kids did this and that. And I, you know how we are. We say, we brought you in this world. We want to take you out of this world. We don't want to do that. So we need to get here on a Sunday morning. We need to be rejuvenated. We need to hear that God is our life and he directs us in paths of darkness and distress and trouble and trials and tribulation we need it. He is my salvation. He is my strength. Amen. That's what we need. That's what you need. That's how you get away from your enemy. He's the only one that can set you up on high and hide you in plain view. And your enemies are like, how did he get up there? I, 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 didn't we do this? Yeah, we did. Well, how did he get promoted? Like, not only did he get promoted once, he got promoted twice. How did that happen? Well, I heard that he's got some guy named Jesus on his side. He's a part. And, and then with that Jesus, that Jesus got a got there's something he called the Godhead. And they talk about God the Father. And I hear him talking about God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he was talking the other day about angels. When God dispatches angels. And, and let me tell you, so he, he got something that we ain't got. He got the Godhead. He got angels. There's Gabriel, uh, there's Sinclair, uh, there's Michael, there's some angels that they got dispatched and that's why he can sit and stand on high and we can't even get to him and don't know why he even got up there. You see how it is? Now go to verse number six. Go to verse number six. And now shall my head be lifted up above mm -hmm. my enemies around me. Yeah, yeah, see, see you up above your enemy. Keep on going. To, uh, go down to verse number, drop down to verse number eight. Verse number eight, that's where we're at. Verse number eight. Yeah. Yeah. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, uh -huh. my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. So, watch this. David said, I'm going to seek his face. David said, I'm going to seek his face. So that means I'm going to worship him. That means I'm going to praise him. Uh, that means I'm going to pray to him. That means I'm going to seek his face. David didn't say I'm seeking his blessings. David didn't say I'm seeking his favor. David said I'm going to seek his face. <laughs> Are you getting this? See, some of us need to realize. This, the church needs to realize when you are seeking God you're seeking God in the way that God wants you to seek him and he says I want you to seek my face not what I can do not what I can give seek my come on now Matthew uh, the 6th chapter uh, verse number 33 says what seek ye what first the kingdom of God and then he'll do what Add all of those things to see that's what he wants us to do. Seek his faith first. Seek who he is. Seek everything about who he is. That's what he wants us to do. Amen. And David said, David said, I will seek your face. Isn't that all right? Verse number 10. 
Read verse number 10. When my father and my mother forsake me, hmm. then the Lord will take me up. When my father and my mother. <laughs> you know, <laughs> David is saying, I can't count on nobody. I can't be afraid nor have any fear when God is there. No way I can be afraid. Even when mom and daddy are on my side. Even when mom and daddy are not there for me. There's no reason for me to be afraid because he is my light. He is my life, my strength. He is my salvation. That's where it lies. Not in mama, not in daddy. Too often times you hear about people saying, well, I'm a part of this because my mama was and my daddy was and my grandmama and my great aunt and grandpa, they, I'm a part of this because of them. And I, I would feel, I, I won't feel, I feel as though I gave up the obligation to, 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 to continue what they started. Yeah, but, but my life is the Lord. My salvation is is in the Lord. My strength is in the Lord. Not in mama, daddy, grandmama, granddad, great aunt, great aunt. Not in any of them people. None of them. Isaiah the 41st chapter, verse number 10. I, I want you to go there and I want you to see this is the reason why we cannot. And I'm getting ready to close. There's no reason for you and I uh, to, to be afraid. There's no reason for us to be afraid. Read right. uh, what uh, Isaiah uh, said. Fear thou not. He said do what? Fear thou not. Fear thou not. For I am with thee. For I am with thee. Keep reading. Be not dismayed. He said be not dismayed. For I am thy God. For I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will do what? Strengthen thee. I'll do what? Strengthen thee. He's going to do what? Strengthen thee. He's going to strengthen me. Read on. Ye, I will help thee. He's going to help me. Ye, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. He's going to uphold us with the right hand of his righteousness. Yes. Yes. That's why we don't have any reason to fear. Right. David had it down. David had it down. Isaiah had it down. There's no reason for you and I to fear. Turn to Judges, the sixth chapter, verse number 26. I want, I want to go back to that verse number uh, five, how he, he sets us up. Uh, on, on, I want us to understand that that is a rock that he's uh, set up on. It's a high place, and our enemies are down below us looking up to us. Uh, look at what uh, was read, uh, what was written in Ju uh, Judges, the sixth chapter, verse number 26. Read. And build an altar unto the he Lord said, thy build God. Build an altar unto the Lord thy God. Upon the top of this rock. Upon the top of this rock in the order in the order place in and, the order place and take a second bullock and take a second bullock and then off an and offering, offering a burnt sacrifice a burnt offering a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove with the wood which of the grove shall you cut there. down it's a high place and nobody can get to you finally verse number 14 of our text brother smart listen to this it's hard for us to do this it's hard for me sometimes to wait it, 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 listen, it, it gets hard for me to wait on God sometimes. But David, remember, he set the thesis in verse number one. And then he's supporting everything that he said. He's undergirding it and, and laying the foundation of everything else that he said to get us to understand where our light is, where our salvation is, and where our strength is. Read verse number 14. Wait on the Lord. He said, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. He's going to strengthen your heart. And finally he says, do what? Wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait, I say, yes. on the Lord. Yes. Wait. Yes. But sometimes we get too busy. We want to do it ourselves. We think God is a little too slow. Hey, we we, we want to rush him. But we want to hurry him up. We want to we get on our knees and pray to him and tell him, you need to do this right now. I can't wait. Yeah, we do that. I've done it. I, I've done it. But have you ever noticed that when God does show up, he may not show up when you called on him. 
when you wanted him to show up, but when he showed up, you were not, you know how I said he was what right on time. Wait on the Lord. Yes. Yes. Underdog, the best cartoon ever on the planet. Simon Bar Sinister, Riff Raff, I couldn't stand them. Sweet Polly Purebred, I thought she was the finest woman in cartoon. An underdog had her. <laughs> but I'm telling you, underdog, underdog said there is no reason to fear because underdog is here. I want you to know there's no reason to fear because the light is here. Our salvation is here. Yeah. Our strength is here. Right. And it's in the yeah. almighty God. You heard the word of God on the day. Maybe there's somebody here that wants to repent of the sin. Uh, someone has uh, allowed their fears to overtake them. Someone who's afraid. I don't know what your phobia is, but we all got them. Somebody here that has allowed their phobia to overtake them, to keep them from being the best that they could be. Somebody's got a phobia in here right now that's keeping them from doing something that they've been dreaming about doing. Maybe it's starting a new business. Maybe it's quitting a job that has caused you nothing but angst forever. <laughs> Amen. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's something that you need to do for your children. There's something. Maybe it's something that needs to be done at the church. Maybe it's something that you need to do. There's some phobia you have that is keeping you from being the very best Christian that you can be. No reason to fear. God got it. He don't need to take a super energy pill either. We don't. You've heard the word of God on the day. We need somebody to come. We need someone here who's struggling, who's afraid, who has fear in their heart, who has challenges that they've been struggling with forever. Just let it be known. That is the subtle work of Satan. If he can keep you stagnant, if he can keep you in an apathetic state, then he's got you right where he wants you to be. And that's a hindrance to the growth and the broadening of the borders of the kingdom of God. All of us have talent. We have skill. And God has given all of us spiritual gifts that we can use for the upbuilding of the kingdom of God. Somebody needs to repent. Somebody needs to confess. Somebody needs to be baptized. You know what you need to do. You need to hear the word. You need to hear the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. According to 1 Corinthians 15, chapter verse number 4, uh, when uh, Paul said uh, that Jesus was uh, uh, buried, uh, he, uh, 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 he was, uh, I'm all messed up, 1 Corinthians 15, chapter verse number 1 through 4, uh, that he, he died, he was buried, and he arose again according to uh, the scripture. So uh, that's what you need to believe. Uh, Romans 10 and 17 says faith cometh by, uh, 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 it is impossible, no, that Romans 10 and 17 says that uh, without faith, <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> Romans 10 chapter verse number 17, faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, <laughs> sometimes they escape your mind, uh, Hebrews the 11 chapter verse number 6 says without faith it is impossible to please him uh, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him the key word is diligently and seek uh, you've heard something that may be different uh, you want to find out more uh, remember uh, the word of God uh, is uh, like a lamp unto our feet according to Psalms 119 chapter verse number 1 and 5 so his word is a lamp unto our feet there you go there's the light that he is talking about so and then you have to be baptized. You got to repent of your sin. You have to be baptized. And then you must live faithfully until the end of your life, this physical life. Uh, that's what you have to do. And we want somebody to do that. If you're outside of the body of Christ, we want you to do that right now as we stand and sing the Savior song of invitation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you.
Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. You've been so Just want to thank you, 